So you guys know how difficult it is to search for a particular photo or a picture of a particular person, especially when you've got thousands of photos in the gallery. But fortunately, these Samsung phones have a powerful search engine which is built right into the gallery. So to look for pictures of a particular person, all you have to do is tap on the search button in the gallery and you will see that the phone is going to show faces of people which you can tap to see the photos and videos they are in. That is awesome, right? So this is going to make searching for photos of people super easy. And apart from this, you've even got more options like the phone keeps photos and videos organized in different categories like selfies, slow motion videos, hyperlapses, etc, etc. And if you scroll down and tap on things slash scenery, you'll notice that all your photos have been properly categorized. So tapping on animals will show you pictures of animals, cats and dogs in my case. Building will contain pictures of buildings. Cars will have cars. And you've got deserts, drinks, electronics and so on and so forth. So you absolutely must check out the search engine in the gallery because it makes looking for photos a lot easier. Now the gallery is also integrated into the main search engine of the phone which you can find by opening up the app drawer and tapping here. And because of the gallery integration you can also search for your photos using this. So if we type dogs the phone is gonna show us pictures of dogs in the gallery. And if you want to be more specific, you can search for a particular breed. Like if you type in beagle, it's going to show us pictures of beagles. That is awesome, isn't it? And if we type flowers, well, it's going to show us pictures of flowers that are in the gallery. And not only that, you can also search for photos containing text. So let's search for the word claim and the phone is going to show us pictures that have the word claim in it. And there you go. So this is going to make searching for photos super easy. Also, by default, the phone doesn't recognize people. So if I search for pictures of myself, it's not going to show anything from the gallery, even though I've got pictures of myself in there. So the phone doesn't know who I am, but we can fix that by going back into the gallery and then tapping on the search icon and assigning names to faces that are listed over here. So we can let the phone know that, hey, this face belongs to Charlie and we're gonna save this. So now if we type in Charlie, it is also gonna show my pictures because now the phone knows that this face belongs to Charlie. So you can go ahead and assign names to different faces in the gallery so it becomes easier for you to search for a particular person. All right, so check this out. Whenever you get a notification from an app, so I've sent myself a message over Snapchat, what you can do is pull down the notification panel and long press on the notification and then drag it out like this and place it in the middle of the screen. This is gonna make the app run in the pop-up view mode. So now you can use two apps at the same time, watch YouTube and text your friend. Pretty amazing, right? And when you are done texting, tap here and then close the window. Now, you can also use this exact same method to launch apps in split view mode instead of the pop-up view. So once you get a notification, long press once again and this time drag it to the bottom of the screen. And you will see that it activates the split view mode. And I find the split view extremely useful while browsing the web. So yeah, this is a feature that many people don't know. It's there on their Samsung phones. Now, I don't really talk about widgets a lot, but let me show you a super useful widget that you guys are gonna absolutely love. So let's add the Bixby Vision widget by pinching in on the home screen, then widgets, Bixby Vision, and I want you guys to add the modes widget. And this widget is awesome. First off, it contains a real-time text translator, which is very similar to Google Translate. So as you can see, it will translate text in real time, which can be very useful when you're traveling abroad. There's also a text scanner that you can use to copy text from physical documents and paste the text anywhere on your phone. You can even send them as a text message. Awesome, right? And it also has an image search feature. So if you want to find out more information about something, you can just take a photo and search for it. 
Now, if you feel like the home screen is getting too crowded, you can combine two widgets in a single one. It is very simple. Just drag and drop the widgets on top of each other and you will see both of them will combine, giving us two widgets inside of a single one. Awesome. So this will allow you to save space and have more widgets on the home screen. All right. So to enable this next feature, here's what I want you guys to do. Drop down the quick panel, scroll to the end and then tap on the plus button. Now from this list, drag and drop the camera and the microphone access down to the quick panel. And these two features will give you the ability to completely block the microphone and the camera on your phone. So once you switch either one of these off, none of the apps on your phone will be able to access your camera or the microphone. So even if we launch the camera, you can see that it shows a blank screen. And same thing happens in Snapchat, it just shows a blank screen. And as for the microphone, let's go to WhatsApp and start recording a voice note. So after recording a voice note, if we send this over, you'll see that there is actually no voice in it because the access to the microphone is blocked. So on the recipient phone, we cannot hear anything, even though I've got the volume turned up. So this is a fantastic privacy tool. In case you feel that an app is spying on you, you can always disable the camera or the microphone access. Ever thought about using your phone hands-free? Well, check this out. Open settings. Scroll down. Scroll up. Go home. Open gallery. Swipe to the left. Swipe to the left. Swipe to the right, go home, show apps, go home. So that is awesome, right? This feature is known as voice access and if you want to turn it on, go to the settings and then scroll down to accessibility. Then tap on interaction and dexterity and tap on voice access. So this is the feature that I was just demonstrating. And there is a lot more to the voice access. Open gallery. Go back, show grid 24, 2. So there you go. With this feature, you can use your phone completely hands free. You can even tell the phone to dial a number. Call Charlie's alternate number. So, yeah, voice access is such a powerful tool. So now let me show you something super interesting which was exclusive to the S23 series up till a few months ago. But now even the Note 20 Ultra has this. So what we are gonna do is go to the gallery and open a picture. Now watch what happens when I long press on the dog. And bam! The phone automatically highlights the dog and it gives us three options. So we can now copy, share or save the dog as a new image. So if we select save, you'll notice that only the highlighted area gets saved as a new photo. So here it is. So let's do the same thing again but to a different image and this time we will select copy and the highlighted image will be copied to the clipboard and now you can paste it anywhere you like as I've just done in Samsung Notes. So this is how you extract objects from photos. But what do you do if you want to add an object to an existing photo? Just like how I have superimposed myself on this photo. It almost looks like a real selfie, but it's actually not. It's an image on top of another. Let me show you how to do this. So first, open a photo in which you want to add an object. Then tap on the pencil icon to go into the built-in photo editor. Tap on the smiley face and go to stickers. Here, tap on the icon that looks like a flower and then select create sticker. Next, pick a picture from which you want to extract something. So we will pick this one. Now, draw around the area which you want to turn into a sticker. The phone will automatically detect the area that you want to extract. Once you are done, tap on next. And once satisfied, tap on done. And finally, adjust the dimensions of the sticker so that it looks convincing. And there you go. We have extracted something from another photo and pasted it onto this one. And yes, I know this is a crude example, but if you spend a little time and click proper photos, you can obviously end up with a far better result than I did. But nonetheless, this is such a powerful feature. 
So a couple of days ago, the screen protector on my Z Flip 4 started peeling off. And unfortunately, this is something that requires a trip to the service center because they use a special device to change out the screen protector. And they'll also want the phone to be unlocked so that they can test out the touch functionality after swapping the screen protector. So the logical choice before dropping the phone off for service would be to do a factory reset because you don't want to give your phone to someone with your personal data on it. Well, here's the thing. Instead of doing a factory reset, I would suggest putting the phone in maintenance mode. To switch it on, you will need to go into the settings, scroll down to battery and device care. Inside, you will find the maintenance mode. So once you switch it on, this mode is gonna isolate all your personal data and it's gonna feel like the phone is back to its factory default settings. And you can also see that the gallery is completely empty. And so is the phone book. But all of the personal data is still on the phone, but it is completely isolated. Yet, the phone is fully functional. And the service center guys will be able to do their diagnostics. Even if you connect the phone through USB, it's not gonna show up. So the phone kinda appears as if it is empty. And once the repairs are complete, you can exit the maintenance mode, which will require your biometrics or the PIN, and everything will be back to normal. Now, I absolutely love taking handwritten notes with the S Pen, but one of the issues that I always run into is that my handwriting is never in a straight line. But fortunately, the phone has a feature that will straighten out the handwritten notes. Let me show you. Now I've taken this in the screen of memo so what we are gonna do is save this and go into the Samsung Notes app. Here's the handwritten note that we have just created so we're gonna open this and enter into the editing mode. Now in the bottom row locate the straighten option and tap on this to straighten your handwritten note. And there you go. Awesome right? Looks much better. You can also change the size of your handwritten note by selecting the lasso tool. Here it is. And now let's select the handwritten note. And now you can change its size and also reposition it. So this is going to give you a lot of flexibility. You can also change different aspects like the color and the thickness of your handwriting. So all you have to do is tap on the change style button, which is this one. Pick the color that you want to change to and then adjust the thickness. And now, all you have to do is select the letters on the handwritten note that you want to modify. So you can see that changes the color and the thickness of the handwriting. I also love to draw shapes with the stylus, but as you can see, they are far from being perfect. So if you want to draw perfect shapes, tap on the auto fix shape icon before you start drawing. And now, the phone is going to straighten out the lines and the shape itself. Awesome, right? It just makes the handwritten note look more professional. Sharing high quality videos or a lot of photos over messaging applications can be quite a challenge. So first off, you get reduced video quality and even though WhatsApp now supports HD videos, you're still limited to 720p and not to mention the video length limit. So the 5 minute video has been cut down to 4 minutes and 24 seconds. But you know what? Samsung smartphones have a feature that will allow you to share full length 4K videos and photos in their original quality with anyone you want, even if they don't have a Samsung smartphone. So this feature, which is quick share, is cross platform. Now, to send photos and videos using quick share, all you have to do is open the gallery and select the stuff that you want to send over. For demonstration, let's send this video over because it's a large 4K video. Okay, so tap on the share button and from this list, select quick share. And if you don't see the quick share button here, swipe and tap on more. And the quick share button should be over here. So once you open quick share, tap on the icon that looks like a QR code. And once you do, what will happen is that the phone will upload the original file to Samsung Cloud and it will give you a QR code and a link which you can share with anyone you want and the recipient will be able to download the original file from any device. So once the phone finishes uploading the file to Samsung Cloud, we can send the link over to our Sony phone on which we can download the original 4K video. So there you go. That is awesome. So there is absolutely no loss in the video quality. It is the exact same 4K video. 
So the next time you want to share large video files or lots of photos, make sure that you try QuickShare. You can also share the clipboard across Samsung devices and this allows you to copy and paste text between them. So on the S23 Ultra, I found something interesting and I want to send this text over to this phone. So what we are going to do is take a screenshot and then press on the T button. And you'll see that the phone highlights the text and now we can select and copy the text. And now we will be able to paste the same text on the Note 20 Ultra which I've got over here. And there you go. So this feature is called continue apps on other devices. You can enable this feature by going into the settings, tap on connected devices and then continue apps on other devices. And for this feature to work, both the devices must be signed in into the same Samsung account and also must have Bluetooth and Wi-Fi turned on. And other than the shared clipboard functionality, you can also synchronize the Samsung web browser. So as an example, if you are browsing a website on your phone and you want to open it on your Samsung tablet, what you can do is grab your tablet, open Recents and press on this little button and the app data will synchronize and the tablet will open the exact same web page that you were browsing on your smartphone. So this is actually quite useful and an underrated feature that no one really talks about. All right, so that brings us to the end of the video. And let me know if you like the intro less videos because if you haven't noticed, there was no intro at the starting of this video. You know what, I kind of like this format because the intro itself takes about 30 to 40 seconds and if I cut the intro, I can fit more content. Anyways, do let me know your thoughts about this and I guess I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching and make sure that you are subscribed so that you don't miss out on new uploads. This is Tech Guy Charlie, signing off.